Hello there! I'm the Dragonator and I like fairy tales. It's part four! We are going to continue with King Arthur and his knights. In today's stories with King Arthur, some loose ends will be tied as well as some foreshadowing for the next time we meet with King Arthur and his knights. Without further ado, I hope that you enjoy my little drawing of King Arthur. As England was now at peace, King Arthur and his knights were willing to take over Ireland and Norway if it meant keeping the peace. Ireland's king was kept prisoner with the nobles now answering to Arthur, and the king of Norway was slain in battle. During Arthur's travels, he came across a town with a terrible problem. There was a giant that was eating people, including the wife of one of the king's cousins. With the help of Sir Kay and Sir Bedwin, the giant was slain while trying to choke Arthur to death, and the head of the giant was given to his cousin, signaling that his enemy was no more. Rome was still a powerful entity at the time, and an official found King Arthur and wanted to battle against him. There was a crowd of people who wanted to see this joust, and they had no idea which way the battle was going. For a joust, it definitely seemed serious because the official played dirty, striking down the king's horse. He ended up losing, though, dying in the process. The town was wowed, and the province was given to King Arthur. King Riots of North Wales demanded all the local kings to be beardless lest he goes to war with them. Most of the kings obliged, as there were few swordsmen as powerful as he. But King Arthur said to his messenger, Tell King Riots I don't have one. For I'm, I'm too young. One of King Arthur's knights knew of riots and told Arthur to expect war in the future. The messenger left, and a damsel came in with the sword still in its scabbard. The king asked her why she had one, and she stated that it was a burden on her until she found someone who could take the sword out of it. Only a valiant, brave, noble man can take it out. All but one of the knights tried to take it out, and even Arthur himself tried to no avail. Now, Balin was also a knight, but he got in trouble with the king for accidentally killing one of Arthur's cousins in battle. He had no idea. Honest. However, he wanted to try as well, despite not looking like a knight at the time. And when he tried, he succeeded. Boy, talk about a Cinderella story. The damsel wanted the sword back, for she finally found someone who can take the sword out. Balin wanted to keep it, and the damsel warned that that was not a wise decision as if he kept it, he would eventually kill his best friend, and it would be his demise. He was fine with that. He wanted the sword, he was going to keep it. The damsel left, and the Lady of the Lake came back to King Arthur's court. Remember when she asked him for a favor? Here it is. Kill Sir Balin, the damsel that had the sword, or both. The knight killed her brother, and the damsel killed her father. Arthur said he couldn't do that. Of all the favors in the world, those kinds of favors were not something he would willingly do. Balin heard the lady and recognized her as the lady who killed his mother. He quickly killed her, right in the front of the king. Dude, why did you do that? asked Arthur. She gave me my sword Excalibur and was asking me for a favor in return. Come on. That lady has killed many, including my mother, through her witchcraft, King, replied Balin. You could have waited. Go now, for this shame brought upon my court shall not go unpunished. Sir Balin and his squire parted ways outside and promised to meet again in King Arthur's court, hopefully with the head of King Ryans, so that maybe he could be forgiven. His next adventures... We'll have to wait until next time. I hope that you enjoyed that. Next time we meet with fairy tales, and it will be a very special story, one that's pretty near and dear to my heart. I hope to see you then. Stay safe and have a very good rest of your day. Bye!